Hi everyone, welcome to Brian Davis Scuba. This is an, another video, kind of in, what I informally call my pro series, where I give tips and advice which may be of, of use to dive professionals and dive centres. This video is the first in a three part series where I um, look at the Dan oxygen kit. I was given one recently, as you'll see it wasn't in the best of condition, but I decided that I will salvage it and up upgrade it. And it was fortuitous because I was just about to make an oxygen kit video that we use on the boat, which is a completely different approach to what Dan takes. The Dan system is very portable. It's designed to give oxygen very quickly for a relatively short period of time, as you'll find out in these videos. And the reason I've put them into three parts, I didn't want to make just one long video. So I've split it into three sections. Part one is inspection of the O2 kit as I received it and we're going to test the seal. Then I'm going to produce a video part two which shows what we've done to the regulator to get it back into a serviceable condition and the work we did on the cylinder. And then in the final part, part three, is where we put the whole kit back together and I show you some different things um, that you may not have thought of but would be very very useful in your Dan O2 kit. So hope you enjoyed part one. Please subscribe if you want to see parts two and part three. Once these videos have been produced and uploaded, I'll be producing one on what I kind of call my expedition grade or dive boat grade O2 kit, which I feel is really good and suited for divers um, on boats in particular. So enjoy the video. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to get this back into good usable condition give you some tips on how to um, store and use it and when you should do some maintenance. I recommend that um, at least once a year you should do what I call a service and upgrade to the unit. I'll explain that in detail as we go along but essentially you visual inspection the cylinder, you make sure everything's clean and you replace the seals on the box because they are notorious for leaking if they're not looked after. A lot of dive instructors, a lot of dive centres rely on Dan oxygen kits as their primary means of providing oxygen to an injured diver, whether it be from DCI, decompression illness, gas embolism, or even in assisting in CPR. So I've just been given this um, kit by um, as an instructor that's just retiring. It's quite an old kit. He says he's, he's never used it except for some rescue training. He said it should be like new. So let's open the box and have a look. I'll be really surprised if it is like, like new. Just before we open the box, I'll just talk about DAN, which means Divers Alert Network. Um, they were originally originated in the States as a not-for-profit not organization dedicated to researching um, diving um, illnesses and the effects of pressure, etc., underwater and they started a, a program where they would train people in oxygen administration. Dan has now become a worldwide organization, still not for profit, I believe. Um, and one of the things they realized it was difficult to get uh, oxygen kits easily ready to use off the shelf. You kind of had to get all the components and assemble them yourself. So hence, that's where the Dan rescue packs came from. I believe this is a, a Dan rescue pack extended care, which means it comes with the one Jumbo D cylinder, which gives you about um, 636 litres, I think, of available oxygen. As we go through this, you'll see a little tip that I'll give you so you know um, how much oxygen you've got available for your casualty or for your patient. So let's open the box. So, put the two front. Now, I always find these side clips very difficult to use so, and you want to be opening this quickly so we'll make some little modifications on there uh, which will allow us to open those clips much faster so there we go so it, yeah it looks in pretty good shape or is it um, right let's have a look at the cylinder first And let's look at the marking, markings. So, okay, it's DOT, Transport Canada, 3AL, that 3ALM, I guess that means medical. 
this looks like it's a charge pressure or filling pressure of 153 bar because that's for the Canadians or 2216 PSI for the Americans. So this is a, um, a North American spec cylinder. How do I know that? One, by the, these markings and two, if other countries in the world tend to go with a white cylinder and then offer white cylinders as well. Here in the UAE, it doesn't really matter, right? And we will be marking this with um, a sticker saying oxygen anyway. It's made by Luxfa and it was made in July 1994. So what's quite strange, where's the serial number? Oh, and there's the serial number, HH8251. Now what I can't find on here is any information on water capacity or how many cubic feet it will hold. Um, that might be because it's an older cylinder and they didn't need to do that. I think this HH might actually refer to the, um, the capacity, I'm not sure. So what I will do is send an email to my friend Mark Gresham at um, DCI PSI um, Cylinder Inspection uh, Training Agency and get his advice. It has been hydroed once in October 03 and again it looks like in August 10 but th this is a bit suspicious because there's no unique identification mark. If this had been in North America it would have to have a, a DOT hydrostatic um, test house um, approved stamp but anywhere in the else in the world you should have a unique stamp so this doesn't tell me who tested it or anything so I expect um, this was tested on the cheap um, just at a gas company or a fire extinguisher company so what we've got to do is get this rehydroed um, and then also before we do that we're going to do a visual inspection I'm just looking at, at the outside of this and it looks in fairly good condition except we've got some what I call under vinyl or under plastic corrosion it was common in the 90s to uh, apply this plastic like uh, film I guess it was onto these cylinders but what happens over the years if they're not looked after you get in the salt water environment you get salt build up underneath the coating so what we'll do on this we will remove this right we'll look at the corrosion I don't think it's anything that's going to um, fail the cylinder we will then clean up the cylinder using some special pads because we don't want to remove any metal uh, we'll do um, a quick internal inspection to make sure it's okay and then we'll send it for hydro we'll oxygen clean it um, put some stickers on get it refilled and it will go back in so that's that's the cylinder quite pleased with that um, you see on these I was talking about the seals earlier and there's a seal here and it does degrade or and, and um, gets a bit stiff with time so Dan do do a, a kit uh, it's like they call it an upgrade kit and your upgrade kit I think um, so you can replace that I would say at least once every year but what I'm gonna do with this I'm gonna replace the seal but when we finish going through everything I'm gonna take this to pieces take all the foam out the foam looks in pretty good condition um, but I will take it out wash it sanitize it before I put it back in and that'll be done just with a, a simple I'll, I'll wash it in some soapy water first and then I'll just use a, a mild dental solution to sanitize it um, so let's look what's in here right here's the regulator Wow now the um, next video after this is going to be on what I call expedition grade or long journey grade O2 kits and I'm really going to focus on not using this sort of stuff. These are medical grade um, paramedic hospital type kits. They're not designed to be on a dive boat. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they're not good but they need a lot of maintenance and you'll see now, I can see now, 
some problems on here. Right, so let's have a look. Those are a bit loose. The, 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 it's suffered from corrosion. Luckily, I think with this regulator, or what you divers would call the, the first stage, is um, serviceable. Here you see, so I'll just take you through something. That's a constant flow. We can set the flow on there, right? And generally we want, we're gonna be using 15 liters. So, I mean, you can see this is a, not designed specifically for diving because it's got various flow rates, but typically 15 liters is what we want to use. And I'll explain about that as we go along. So that's off. So that's where we, uh, this hose definitely needs replacing. Here's the demand valve. That looks, for, this needs to go. This is, this is the true fit mask. It's gone, it's stiff, it's sticky, it's discolored. So we're gonna discard that. And this is the demand regulator. You get two versions, one with a power button here. And that's where you can um, use it to assist in, in CPR. You do need special training for that. Um, Dan, do, do sell those um, demand valves, I know. So what are we gonna do on here? These um, fittings look pretty ropey and they're dirty. We'll see if we can clean those up if, and if they're okay, we'll put them back. If not, we will um, change them out. Um, now, one of the things I don't like about these types of regulator is that's always left open to the elements. In there is a, is a special seal, right? A special oxygen regulator seal. I think they're called a, a Bordock seal if I'm, not, if I'm not wrong. But one of the things I'm gonna do when I bring this back to service, I'm gonna put a little um, spacer in there that seals on there so we can keep that clean all the time. Um, a lot of you who are nitrox divers or trimix technical divers will know the importance of um, O2, keeping everything O2 clean. And generally, people have not kept their oxygen kits O2 clean. Um, so we, we're going to have a go at improving that. This is going to, this is going to, this is wheels going to, or going to come out, and we'll clean that up. We'll take the pressure gauge off. We'll take all these fittings off so we can just try. We'll probably just use a Scotch-Brite pad just to clean this up a bit. Um, once we've done all of that, we will check the flow. We'll test the, the flow at 15 litres a minute. So, so that's that done. Hose has got to go. And hopefully it's still serviceable. Um, let's have a look in here. This is sticky. Silicon goes sticky over the years. This is probably still the original. This is a pocket mask with um, which you can connect. You see, this needs replacing. This is going in the bin. Right. So that's where we can um, connect an oxygen hose to. We don't have any spare oxygen hoses here. We'll have to take one off. So we should have things ready to go. And that would connect on there and we can be doing um, CPR with manual CPR with the um, oxygen assist. But as I say, that's gone. We'll replace that. Here's a non-rebreather mask. Um, some evidence recently suggests that I'm using a non-rebreather mask um, like this where you can exhale the waste hair and you have a reservoir there is practically the most effective way um, and so um, you should have these they're one time use only so you should keep a couple in we'll be replacing that it's all sticky all the silicon oils coming out can't remember what these masks were called it's just a simple mask that goes on it's, it's not much use in the kit anymore we'll be relying on the true fit and mass and the non-rebreather mask and the pocket mask when we rebuild the kit. So, oh, don't want to lose that plastic bag. What's in here? That's just saying it's a non-rebreather mask and it gives you some instructions. Um, 
Also, what's missing in this kit, and I think way back in the 90s, they didn't have the slates. So we'll also order some slates on there, how to assemble and oxygen, so people can, if they forgot anything while they're trying to do it, they can quickly refer to one of the Dan slates. So that's it for this. I'm going to strip all, all this down now. Um, we'll film how we remove uh, this coating off here. Um, we'll have a look inside and then we'll send it for hydro and then but the next job is we are going to take this to pieces and we're going to see if this seal is still working so what we're going to do we've removed everything from the case um, and we're just going to going to close this um, pressure valve so we have this um, pressure release valve so we've just got the seal in that seal is going to be re replaced as i said but what we're going to do is close it up then we're going to put it on the dock and we're going to zap it with a hose and just see if it does leak i mean this is quite an old seal i will be amazed if it doesn't leak but we don't know you know i, I did clean up the seal just before um, just a while ago when i took everything out i took the seal out gave it a clean let's see how it does we've got the box on the dock and we're just going to put this hose on and we're just going to I mean this is kind of simulate or worst case scenario if you're in a small dive boat and you've got salt water splashing on Okay, time to look inside. Okay, so let's go and have a look. And that's pretty good. I would have thought that would have leaked like a sieve. Um, but the, just by cleaning up that seal, um, it stayed pretty good. I hope you enjoyed part one. Um, part two is coming out very soon and that's showing what we did to the regulator to get it back into a, a workable condition. It's not going to be like new but it will be in a good enough shape to be used and then all the work that we did on, on the cylinder um, to bring that back into a usable and certified condition. So hit the subscribe button hit the like button if you like this see you next time